1983 Ferrari Mondial. Or is it a Mondial? I don't know how to pronounce it. Does anyone even want this car? Is this the Ferrari that just nobody cares about? Or will people fight over this thing? You might be surprised what happens on Bring a Trailer. Let's find out right now. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of The Bit Nerd, your daily nerd on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick, coming to you from the downtown Las Vegas Container Park in downtown Las Vegas, along with my partner, Michael Deeb, in downtown San Francisco in the yet-to-be-named <laughs> studio. We are leaning on you, the nerd herd, to help us name the studio. What's up, Michael Deeb? Good morning, JP. It's a, uh, what is it? It's a Ferrari day today. That's going to be oh, fun. Today's a Ferrari hey. day. Look at that. Little What's the matter for you? Teasing the most interesting car of the day. I'm showing off the stickers here. Nice. Um, we are going to set up, uh, we're going to set up, we want to set up like, I don't, I hate Patreon. I just don't like those guys. Um, okay. So, but we want to maybe use Indiegogo or buy me a coffee or something for you guys to uh we've been a lot of people have been asking how do we support the show uh and we really appreciate that we haven't been able to give a good answer but we are working on that we got a lot of things kind of brewing for our thousand subscribers uh yes. you know that we're, we're getting really really close here uh and yeah. you guys have been helping by uh, sharing videos in groups on facebook and on instagram and those kinds of places and we really appreciate that the nerd herd is growing it we are yeah, we are sharing the What's that? Go ahead. I was looking at some of the comments recently, JP, and was really cool to see that uh, two of our new subscribers uh, both commented that uh, they had found the show because they were looking at car videos on YouTube and YouTube showed them bid nerds on the side, uh, which I thought is really great. So I, it, it sounds to me like with this this recent surge that we've had over the last hundred subscribers or so, or whatever, um, that we're um, you know, we're starting to crack the code of the algorithm, at least just a little bit. And I hope we get another big windfall of of uh, recommendations from YouTube as we get to a thousand subscribers. But thank you uh, to all the new listeners, all the new viewers. Uh, we really appreciate you. Welcome to the show. Yeah. And on top of that, we are now available on just about every um just about every podcast platform that there is Spotify, Amazon, Apple. Uh, you can find the Bit Nerds pretty much everywhere that you enjoy and consume podcasts. So if you found us on one of those, we very much appreciate you guys. Uh, come over and uh, come over and check us out on the YouTube side and hit give us a subscribe and like and maybe put some comments over there. This is kind of yeah. where we put the main. This is the main show. Um, but yeah. uh, we are also look. We've been we want to do a lot of really cool things. When we get to a thousand, we can start doing um, a live show, and we want comments from you guys let us know what day and what time of day would be best for you to join us on a weekly live episode of bid nerds we do we record the show uh and we kind of marry the beginning and the end but we want to do a live one where you guys can interact with us uh while we do it i know a lot of you hell one ross of our, uh, ross is in yeah the other side ross, of the planet yeah, so that's gonna ross be tough for him. the first one to give us a time and he goes but of course <laughs> Because I'm in New Zealand, so it's not like I'm going to watch it live anyways. Right. Uh, we love you, Ross. Yeah, yeah, I have a feeling Ross would get up in the middle of the night just for us. He's that kind of swell fella. We, he's he's king, <laughs> king, king of the nerd herd. Uh, oh, my God. Guys, so many good guys on there. Uh, so thank you guys so much. Um, all right. Uh, before we get started, just want to give a big shout out to our good friends at God and Classic, God, God and Las Vegas. Uh, they look, if you have a, if you have a classic Porsche, Porsche and you need some parts for it, give them a call over there and let them know the bid nerd sent you. And if you're also looking for a classic Porsche to add to your garage, they can help you with that. Um, yep. they get the best cars and you don't have to deal with all this auction nonsense. Some of the, some of the stuff uh, that we deal with looking at these cars in the auction kind of makes you go, Oh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I just want to go to something like God and not have to deal with the nonsense over here. Uh, so let's, uh, with all that said, Go say hello to our friends at God and Classic. Hey, next, look, uh, after the, we're going to go in the future, in the middle of this show, <laughs> at some point, what we do, if you're yeah. new to the show, what we do is we find the most interesting car from P Car Market and Cars and Bids and bring, bring a trailer. Uh, we have a conversation about that car. We make a prediction as to what's going to happen with that car's auction results. And then we marry the results uh, with our 
wrong predictions, and that's where things you know really get interesting. So you can play along by putting uh, in the comments below. You can give your guess what's going to actually happen with the auction results. But we have a pro coming on the second half of the show. We got Lucky Lopez coming in uh, for the second Yo. half of this episode, so he's gonna he's gonna lend his expertise. That'll be yeah. really cool. So stick around for that. Uh, but all right, let's get to the most interesting car of the day, Michael D. What is it? You teased that it's a Ferrari. What kind of Ferrari? Yeah. Oh, JP, we haven't done one of these in a while, and I was just looking at this car and thinking what do i want to park in the garage next to my carrera wide body and that would be a mid-engine ferrari uh, from the same era i just think that'd be really cool to have you know two car solution for for the sports cars i would love to have something from stuttgart and something from marinello this car would be a candidate a 1983 ferrari mondial quattrovalvole uh coupe and a uh, really interesting car jp out of plano texas showing just 29,000 miles. This car had been listed on BAT before in September of 2022, which honestly was just like seven, eight months ago. And at that time, our car failed to sell um, as it was bid to $39,750 on a respectable 49 bids. But that $39,750 in September 13th of 2022 was a reserve not met. And so the car has come up again, and I believe offered by the same seller. Let me confirm that since I've got both windows open. Boom, boom, boom. Indeed, the same seller is selling the car. Um, really neat car, JP. The Mondial is actually the successor to the 308 GT4 Dino um, in that it is a mid-engine car, but it's a two plus two. Um, so in all Honestly, the GT4 Dino is really the, the the closer competitor to the to like a 911 Carrera from the 70s um, than say the Magnum PI car, which is really just a two seat car. Uh, the the 308 GT4 Dino actually has uh, different suspension geometry, and those cars handle really really well. Whereas the Magnum PI Ferraris uh, don't handle worth a damn. They're they're actually terrible driving cars. Uh, but the GT4 Dinos are great. This car even though it doesn't look like it is actually an evolution of that car's platform this car was built on a slightly stretched version of the gt4 dino platform the motor is transverse it's a gated five-speed manual um in this guys uh the, let me start back start over again the mondial 8 was the successor to the gt4 dino and that car only was built for a year or two and came only as a coupe um, a few years later they made the quattro valvo and this car got the four valve head and makes about 240 horsepower. And this car was offered in both coupe and cabriolet form. And of course, Ferrari sold way more of the cabriolets than they did of the coupe. So the coupes are kind of rare and they're kind of, I mean, I don't love the rubber bumpers, but they're kind of cool looking with the sort of flying buttresses, those wings that come off the back of the car um, behind the rear um, quarter windows. So pretty neat car. I think they're better drivers than their 308 uh, counterparts. Um, largely unloved because they don't have the Magnum PI and that sort of poster child Ferrari tie-in. Kind of take it or leave it styling. They certainly have a long wheelbase to accommodate that rear seat, even though the rear seat offers zero legroom. Um, but I wonder if one day these cars will get their due. This car failed to sell at about forty thousand dollars not that long ago jp and it's up again so the big question is will it make more than its mark from last year um and then if it does will it sell will it actually get to whatever the reserve is so i send it back to you i can confess that i've never driven a mondial i have driven 308s um, and i've driven gt4 dinos which is a car i would really love to own but if you're talking about bang for the buck uh your mondial uh, coupe or spider is is the ferrari to have um and in a lot of ways they have better geometry and they're better handling cars than the 308s um so any love any experience behind any version of a mondial and what did you think absolutely i really really do love mondials uh i don't know why i you know they they've <sighs> I've always kind of liked the weird stuff, though. I like 348s. I always like 964s when everyone else thought they were crap. Um, yeah. I just, 
I don't know. Maybe it's because they were attainable. You know, I remember um, yeah. back in the day, I, I, I bought a Z4 um, and I was kind of like on the fence. Do I get this or do I get the old Mondial? And, you know, at the time they were about the same price, you know. and Right. Still are. <laughs> and, and still are, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and this car is just so much cooler. I remember going to the Z4 because I knew I wouldn't be able to uh, carry that. Sorry, guys, if that noise coming through. Um, I couldn't carry the maintenance cost of something like this. Yeah. You always hear the horror stories of, you know, a, yeah. a spark plug getting stuck in one of these or something like that. And it's just like, oh, my God. Um, but I have driven them, and I absolutely loved it and, and, and was surprised by how much people hate these and say they're awful. And it's like, man, every time I've driven one, I've driven like a handful of times and, and loved every one of them. Even a cra- like actually fairly recently, Mental and I um, went out and looked at one. Uh, Mental's a good friend of ours. He's on the Dura Die Porsche podcast. Check What's up, out. Mental? Uh, Mental and I went out and looked at just an absolute pile of crap one here in Las Vegas yes. uh, just for fun, you know, and, I, you know, I think the guy wanted like 19 grand for it or something like that. Um, oh, my and God. It was <laughs> it was junky at best. Let's put it that way. But even that was terribly fun to drive. It made the noises and the and the yeah. notchy shifting with the gate and everything like that. It was like, God dang, this is just a blast, man. For 20 grand, be able to drive a Ferrari. So I don't know. Um, uh, what is it? Chris, uh, Chris Harris has a convertible yeah. one. He loves yep. it. He, his, he's got a famous film uh, on his channel, uh, and he's well-known for loving that car. I mean, how, what, I, and, you know, me not being a cabriophobe, I kind of prefer a car with no roof. Um, right. What's the movie uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels uh, from the 80s with Steve Martin and uh, Michael Keaton? Not Michael Keaton. Yeah. Other Michael. Weird uh, Science. Remember Weird, Weird Science? Weird Science, of course, had the Mondial or Mondial, yeah. however you pronounce it. But I always like the one in Monaco from uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Uh, yeah. Steve Martin uh, having fun with the, with the ladies in the car. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I've always have, had a soft spot for these. I don't know why they were so poo-pooed. Um, and uh, I really I would love to have one now. So the question is, how much would it cost me? Is this the one, would this be the one to get? All right, JP. So I forgot to mention a couple things because I talked myself into a big circle, but um, these early cars actually have metric measured wheels, which makes buying tires for these cars mm. a problem. And the tires on this car are date coded like a century ago. <laughs> like I think they're mm. 05 tires, which is really bad. Um, so you're either going to plump for um, some unusually expensive uh, metric sized tires which are not easy to find but they're, they're out there um, or the, the, the coup d'etat would be to switch over to conventional like either 14 or 16 inch uh, alloy wheels from a 308 and fit them to this car so you'd have to buy wheels and tires and again that could be pretty expensive that's going to run you somewhere between five and ten thousand dollars because all of the wheels on the Ferraris are magnesium they're they're not in inex- they're not inexpensive um also, the uh, headliner is uh, sagging on the uh, on the sunroof part of that, so you'd want to get that fixed. So it's not a perfect car, despite the low 29,000 miles. So, JP, here we go. As I mentioned, this car failed to sell last year for 39,000 bucks. Our car is sitting at, with just a couple of days to go, $12,500 on a lowly four bids. Um, Mondial lack of love continues to plague these cars. And JP, I mean, look, I'm not Miss Chloe, but just reading the tea leaves, I I don't think this car is going to break the thirty nine thousand. I actually think forty grand for this car would be a retail number, and that's if the car was perfect. And it's not. The car needs some attention, and namely those tires and fixing the headliner, and, and you know, probably could use a buff out. The steering wheel has some scratches on it, and a few other things. Um, I I think that not accepting the 40 grand that he received last year on BAT is not going to age well for him. I think this car struggles to find 30 grand because I'm a Ferrari lover and a Mondial apologist. I'm going to say $35,000, but I will um, send that to you with I'm bidding with my heart and not my brain. My brain is telling me this car might not even make 30 grand this time around. That $19,000 for the Mondial, um, that you saw which which is a rough one uh doesn't even make sense because nice ones the, the cost of ownership and maintenance on these cars is so high it hurts the values of the car and that's the problem um that guy is never going to get 19 grand for his rough mondial because this guy can't even get 40 for a nice one and this nice one needs work so jp i send it to you at 35 it's an easy under to take but um 
I, I, I don't think he's going to see 39 again. And I wonder if it like, did he lower the reserve to relist it? I imagine BAT would have to enforce some sort of policy. Like we'll let you run the car again, but we, we're going to stand on the reserve and it's not up for debate. So I'm guessing that maybe if it gets to 35, it sells. Uh, but that guy is going to regret not taking that 39 from before. So there it is to you, John. What do you think? I mean, you want to know what hurts is, is my soul watching this idiot drive it. Um, oh, this is just so god dang annoying, dude. Look at this jerk. You know, yeah. one-handed, <laughs> rowing through the gears. Look, I mean, what a dick. Uh, I... I, I you know, and his T-shirt's <laughs> dirty. Uh, you can't really see it in the way. It, 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 oh God, I, I just, this kind of stuff just <laughs> ticks me off so much. It's clearly a, deal, a dealer that doesn't know what the hell they, I mean, the fact yeah. that they couldn't sell it before. I mean, screw these guys. Yeah, 29. Uh, I think it gets to 29. And I think it fails to sell again um, unless they, uh, well, did you say this is no reserve or it does have a reserve? It's a no, deal. it has a reserve. Yeah, and so, I'm just wondering how, like how they, like why it, it, at 39 was a retail number for that car and it didn't sell why would bat let this guy relist the car without a reserve that's that's a curious thing i you know i would love to be a fly on the wall on a couple of the board meetings at some of these auction places to see what their policy is only because um i do have a background in being in the room when during sales meetings and understanding how the process is supposed to work you know i mean I, obviously there's your ideal thing but then there's got to be protocols in place to protect the auction platform is, is is bat really okay with this car failing to sell again did they say okay we'll list it but it's going to be a twenty thousand dollar reserve like i'm i wish we could see you know the back page of this listing you know what i mean you know what i'm saying was there something really weird that stuff. happened on the last the, the last go around because like sometimes you know like maybe they had a stall out on the on the you know sometimes there could be a technical problem or maybe someone accident, you know, like how many times have you seen, you know, it's a real thing where someone accidentally bid too much, like someone fat fingers an extra zero or an extra digit or whatever. And they clearly didn't mean to bid, you know, $50,000 over. They only meant to go $500 more uh, and they wound up going and So, and then they fix it during the auction, but now you've kind of ruined the flow of the auction. Maybe they're like giving him maybe something like that happened on the last one. No. I don't know. Um, I At the very end of the auction, there's a comment by the seller, and he says, after the car failed to sell, reading the comments, I guess I was not as responsive as so, as so many expected, and I apologize for that, but I did my this best. Is the, for this the doubters, was the seller that, that, that is The commenting. seller. Okay. He's apologizing. He says, for the doubters, um, this is actually a very well-sorted example, and I made sure of it with an open checkbook. I'll enjoy it for a while before it goes on the market again. So I don't know. Well, what does that mean? I mean, he's like, I'll, I'll enjoy it. I made sure with it. he's a dealer. What are you talking about? You're not an owner. It, it was the previous. It's the same seller, right? Yeah, it's the exact same seller. What a lying sack of shish, man. I mean, I look, screw you, dude. <laughs> I, I hope you fail again. And I hope you never come back to BAT. These are the kind of deals that screw it up for everyone. This guy does. Well, this guy should be on P car market. He would it, totally fit right in with his dirty t-shirt, one handed on the steering wheel, numb fit. I mean, He's the reason why no one would buy it, and it's going to happen again, and he deserves to have a failure here. Um, yeah. He's going to enjoy it again, acting like he's the owner. I, okay, yeah, you can own a dealership and own your own car, but to to not be more – I mean, it's just so disingenuous, this idea. It's it's like when the dealership, when the car salesman, with the when the used sales guy tries to be your buddy. And it's like, bro, you're not my buddy. We all know you're not my buddy. Stop trying to <laughs> act like it, okay? Treat me with respect. I'm good with that. But we know what's going on. You're trying <laughs> – so P car market. All right. What do you guys so think is going to happen really with this funny. Mondial? Is it, uh, is it going to finally find the new owner? Is someone going to save it from this jackass that currently, uh, owns it. Uh, we will find out right after this. What a dick. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions. Like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. Gotten Porsche of Las Vegas.
We are in the future. It's like this, we've got the best flux capacitor because not only are we in the future, we also picked up an expert. We got Lucky Lopez from the Lucky Lopez YouTube yeah. channel. What the hell are you doing here, Lucky? I am here to totally embarrass myself and pick the wrong <laughs> number and make myself look like a complete ass clown. So I'm hoping you guys wrong don't number. make me look too bad on this video. Yeah. yeah oh all right. my God. He's he was off by a thousand dollars on his last guest. Yahtzee's on his very first try. Man, you're like, uh, yeah, you're ringers. like, jeez. All right. So that's what happens when we when we bring a professional in. Uh, Lucky Lopez yeah. has an amazing channel, you guys. If you haven't checked it out already, please do so now. The Lucky Lopez YouTube channel. You can tell if you don't know already, he's a much like bigger deal than we are. And when you're uh, done with that, come back over here and hit the subscribe, like, notification button here if you haven't done it already. We love the nerd herd. Okay. What happened with this Ferrari? All right, so Lucky, what we're looking at is on Bring a Trailer, a 1983 Ferrari Mondial Quattrovalville Coupe. Uh, our car is offered out of Plano, Texas, and is showing 29,000 miles. It failed to sell at $39,000 on Bring a Trailer in September of 22, so basically about six, seven months ago. Um, but they're running it again. A um, couple things that are interesting to note. I think they did the belt service, if I remember correctly. Um, but this car still has like a sagging headliner on the roof. It's got metric wheels so that the like the dates on the tires are from 2005 because it's so difficult to find, um, you know, it's so <laughs> difficult to find uh, tires for the metric size wheels. Um, I will note, Lucky, you did a good job with me. This car has pop-up headlights, everyone. I don't know that I mentioned it before the first commercial break, <laughs> but Lucky would, would, would stop talking to me if I forgot to mention that it has pop-up headlights, which makes it uber, uber cool. But um, Lucky, by the numbers, Ferrari made way less of the, the coupes than the um, convertibles. The Quattro Velvo was the first generation to offer a convertible, so this is kind of a rare car because they would have made way more of the Cabrio uh, stablemates. Our car was sitting for a very long time at just $12,500 on four bids when we reviewed it. I said thirty-five dollars I thought this car might struggle in today's economy to even reach the $39,000 it had gotten before. JP, ever the more pragmatic one, said $29,000. Care to venture a guess as to what this Mondial Coupe, which is 29,000 miles, uh, would have brought on Bring a Trailer last week? Um, well, this is a perfect example of just because it's rare doesn't make it desirable or worth anymore. And unfortunately, this is one of the most unpopular Ferraris. I'm guessing this was a hard stop at about 39. 39. Oh, so you think it would get almost the same number it got the last time it ran about six, seven months ago? That's I pretty good. So. He would have won this. He would have won this one. I don't like this guy anymore, John. Uh, Forty-four thousand dollars brought this baby home. It sold on $44,000, Lucky. Another very good guess from you. And uh, JP, just to round it out, that was on 26 bids. Um, a lot more action than it got last time it ran. Um, JP, the question begs, because uh, you guys were you guys like to bring in the economy conversation. Can we say that $44,000... Um, is actually any more money than $39,000 was in September of 22, given the handful of interest rate hikes and inflation that we may have experienced in the last seven months. Is that not basically the same number, only younger? Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're pretty much right there. We're like probably two percentage points off. But another thing that I think the reason why that's this a good not take, Deep. <laughs> yeah, is, sorry. Is, right? is yeah i don't do you know anybody that actually goes out looking for these cars no. i've seen these all over vegas actually i've seen quite a few out here and it's like i don't know anybody that wants them i've seen a few was on a rock star movie with Wahlberg, the convertible one yeah but besides right. that i've never seen one of these things actually driving they're always sitting in some italian <coughs> shop just waiting to be worked on so to right. me i would wait for a 348 uh 308 or 355 any of those where you can get between the the thirty eight to sixty thousand dollar marker, I think these ones there. I think they got all the money for it. To be honest with you, yeah, I do too. I actually do think it is, uh, but I also think that the number you, you know, based on what I've learned doing the show with John over the last really solid last year and a half, is that um, the, the the economy makes such a big 
deal to what the value, what the numbers are. Don't be blinded by the numbers, but understand what the value of those numbers is saying to you. And uh, and the, he walked away from 39. And it's like, if you asked him, would you take that number again? Okay, great. Well, if you took 39, you lost money on your last one. But at 44, you basically said yes to the number you said no to seven months ago. Um, and so I think he just changed his mind because he didn't spend any more money on the car. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I would way rather have had 40,000 bucks seven months ago than 44,000 bucks now. Uh, you could have done a lot better yeah. with that car yeah. uh, or with that money over the course of that time. Uh, unless he was driving it and loving it and having a great time, but he clearly he wanted to get rid of it back then. I mean, these cars are just a liability. Like, He's so right. I mean, as much as <clears throat> I, you know, I said it before the break, I actually really like these. I always have, I've kind of got a soft spot for them. And we talked about why, from, you know, uh, weird science and all the movies that these cars were in. Um, and I think they drive better than uh, people give them credit for. They're, they're not a great car, but for 40,000 yeah. bucks, you roll up in a Ferrari, you're in a bright red car. It's going to get attention. People are going to see it. They're going to get excited. It's a, it's a sense of occasion. It's not a Countach. It's not the 355 or a th even a 348, like you mentioned, Lucky, which are cars that clearly I like better. But I think those are just generally going to cost a lot more. It's tough to find a nice 348 anymore uh, without spending somewhere in that 60 grand range. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess Ferrari for the buck, this is, this is a okay amount of money this car had a little bit of a, a patina car too this is, it's a little bit rougher than i thought uh should bring this kind of money i, I i'm i'm very surprised by these results yeah, what do you guys you think uh let us know in the comments below was this car bought right too much money not enough let us know we love your comments we always learn stuff from the nerd herd out there uh that's a thing lucky i know you get tons of comments on your videos how much do you learn from your audience i mean you gotta you gotta have some great knowledge coming to the comment section of your videos yeah i mean the, the whole reason we get people in the comment is because every market is different we want to hear everybody's opinion because even though this didn't do really well and bring a trailer you may be in a certain market where like in southern california where this car maybe got 50 sitting on a dealership lot so it's very important you guys chime in in the comment section below because the more stuff we learn from you and you kind of give us hints on video tips um, things you want to talk about and other like maybe you want us to review your cars put it in the comment section below whatever it is we already got some fun giveaways with uh, I know you guys are giving away stickers we're doing a pie in the face and we're just yeah. out there having fun so I guess really interaction is key we want to hear from you guys awesome yeah Thanks. one of our one of our nerd her JP asked us to cover a Jaguar XJR so I am on the search for a good Jaguar I saw one but it was really high mileage and I don't think it's a fair example so the next nice XJR I forget your name but it's for you he didn't forget your name, Lucky. He forgot the the, the nerd herd guy. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, this is for you, uh, guy on the show that's been we've been talking for two hours. Uh, all right. Thanks, Lucky, for hanging out with a couple of knuckleheads. Uh, we will see you guys tomorrow with the most interesting car of the day. Bye. Nerd! Get those nerds!